right now, let's get into the Q&A. I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities, and we shall do that right now. So, up, up, up. Comments. Ooh, David Allen. David Allen usually has a question about Sweatcoin. Good question, David. So Sweatcoin, just kidding. It is coming on September 12th. That's about it. Yeah, where is Beardy? Now there's Beardy right there. One used tennis shoes. That's the only thing we can afford right now. And if you, even if you've done some pretty good investing, so it doesn't matter because everything's stuck on Celsius and Voyager. And so good information. I try to do as best I can. <laughs> Self-serving stakes. Why put the brakes on what money makes? Yeah. Why should we make those politicians who are making a pretty good amount, speaking engagements, book deals, and uh, stop them from trading in uh, stocks? I got to tell you, I think they should stop trading stocks, any kind of equities, any kind of securities, and even cryptocurrency and digital assets. I don't want any, anywhere near it. But uh, it's just me. Just got the notification. Well, it was a short notice thing. Look, you cannot rely. Hey, let me ask you guys a question. You can't rely on YouTube when these live streams come out. Right now we have about 40,000 uh, subscribers to the Dan Teaches Crypto. The website's free. It's all the, the most curated information I can give you in a more condensed uh, version. And uh, I, have you on a, I have you on a newsletter. I put out emails when there's like a big email coming up. If you want me to, I can just shoot you an email in a mass email and just say, hey, we're going live in five minutes. If that's something you wanna do, then let me know in the comments and I will do it. Yeah, that's true. I just got some new shoes yesterday, so I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, hello. Only Bitcoin go from 0 0.2. Yeah, that's right. Smash the likes. See it? Maybe it's just the operating system. Who knows? Email will be nice. <laughs> Do you plan on watching my son, Hunter? Uh, who would win in a fight, Eos or Tezos? So, well, with Beardy behind it, it'd probably be uh, Eos. That's right. That's right. Everybody here right now just gets it. So, it's so relaxing to not have to deal with the tourists in the bull market. This is when everything gets made. And uh, that Twitter spaces I was at, the one of the questions was, they said, Rob, what are you uh, excited about in the crypto space? And I go, I got to tell you, these projects that reach out to me, and these are like top 30 projects. Um, they're telling me the things they're doing. And they're like, can you talk about this or this? I'm like, yeah, sure, just send me the information. There's so many things going on behind the scenes right now that they couldn't do in the bull market that because now that all the noise is out, and of course, you know, this is the time to build, I'm, bu I'm busier now in this bear market by setting up everything and all the news that's coming out than I was in the bull market. Just the problem is I can't talk about a lot of things because they want me to be quiet until things go, things actually, they, they, they can actually say those things. Uh, can VGX reach FTX price? I don't know. Don't ask me about a VGX price prediction. I pretty much bombed that one, $30. Uh, let's see. The politicians are not supposed to be corrupt, the system. That was the original design. Mm. It is within you who you really are. If you're corrupt down at your base, doesn't matter where you are, what job you have or what position you hold. Uh, let's see, I think we're good. It's gonna be a nice one. From... <laughs> Can you buy some more Solana so we can balance out your bias? You know, it's a funny thing. I'm gonna do an updated video about, uh, like, you know, on this channel, we talk about DCA all the time. And DCA is great. I mean, it's great, but let's be honest. It doesn't get you to sell. And I know there's a, a couple of you maybe out there watching right now who are thinking, boy, I wish I would have sold some more crypto at some point when it was at its all-time high or at least close to it. Instead, I diamond hands it all the way down because everybody says diamond hands forever. And that's cool. You can diamond hands forever. I got some people who say, I'm going to diamond hands. I'm going to pass it to my kids after, after I die. 
and then the kids will take it and then they'll die with the crypto and then they'll pass it on to their kids, my grandkids, and they'll die. And uh, we'll just have crypto in the family forever. And we'll use it like that because sure, it might become, who knows, Bitcoin could become the reserve currency of the entire globe. I have no idea. However, uh, if the point is to accumulate more crypto, right? Then this is just my opinion. I'm a financial advisor. But I figure maybe I could sell a little bit higher. I did okay last time. I did awful in 2017, 2018. I did better this, this time. What if I could take a look at some factors and see where exactly I'm going to sell? Uh, so I'm going to do a, a quick video about the plan to actually sell. We already did one, uh, but I want to really dig into it. And one of those, uh, let's see if I can show it to you. Ah, uh, yeah. It's going, to do, it's going to deal with something like this. I just put this together. I'll do the video later. But it takes a look at uh, NUPL, Pi Cycle Tops, and some different indicators and what this all means. And you can, I'll explain it later, but one of the big ones, the outliers that I saw was Solana and the Pi Cycle Top price versus the actual real all-time high price. So how do you differentiate between those things and all these indicators? I'll let you know when I get the video out, which will probably be this week, matter of fact. I'm almost done. And that'll be my plan going forward. Yeah. Yeah, Maudi. I wish I would have sold 80% and buy back these lower, lower lows. Yeah. And, and some people would say like, well, that's not the point of crypto. You should just hold on to it forever. And then, you know, of course, you do that and then you use your regular job or businesses to accumulate uh, dollars just to get more crypto and get more crypto. I'm like, what's the point if you can't enjoy the crypto? I mean, some people got bills to pay. Some people would like to, uh, especially these days in Europe. I mean, look, if, you're, uh, nat if, you're, if your gas bill is uh, 10x and then your crypto portfolio is down 70% and you can't make ends meet, I'm, I'm guessing you might have thought maybe it would be a good time to sell uh, during the bull market. Just saying. <laughs> I wish I would have sold 10%. <laughs> uh, and a little bit taller. That's true. Yeah, maybe. Maybe for them. And I think that's it. Oh. Rob, what do you think about Vitalik said about Bitcoin becoming insecure in the future when it's no longer being mined? We'll find out. It's amazing how, like, um, products that we think will go away or something that we think is just going to be uh, obsolete in the future actually ends up uh, sticking around, you know? Like, uh, like eBay, for example. We thought Amazon was going to crush everything, and it did. eBay is still around. It's not as much as, uh, as big as it used to be, but sure. And then uh, some of the things that we think could still be here, and then it's not. So I don't know. Um, only time will tell. Does that mean like next year it's going to happen? Probably not. I think the last Bitcoin to be mined is in 2140, somewhere on there. 2040, 2140? No, it's got to be 2140. Correct me in the comments, but uh, I'll be dead. So uh, I don't know. I think uh, I don't really care too much. My kids will be fine. Grandkids will be fine. In your opinion, how likely are customers going to get their coins back from Celsius? I see two options here. One is it gets liquidated, Chapter 7, right away. And then everything just comes back in dollars. And that would suck, let's be honest. But, uh, you know, it depends on what they would say is a dollar amount. The other option, and the only way that I kind of see these things out is what Aaron Bennett was talking about and, and Simon Dixon from Bank of the Future, which is uh, we get a token, uh, we get some kind of security, which means that there has to be a little bit more stringent um, on the regulation part. And that would be an equity buy-in for individuals such as you and me to get into the uh, mining operation. And then of course, once it IPOs, if they ever IPOs or whatever, whatever name it is under that or under whatever corporate umbrella it becomes, then that's when the equity comes in. I got to tell you though, in all honesty, for me, like I was going to be here anyhow. And I wasn't, I don't really like to sell during these times. Some people like to sell in the bear market because they have to, and that's okay because they need money. But uh, for me, I'm just like, well, I wasn't going to sell it anyhow. So I have to wait another two or three years. And look, in 2017, I couldn't believe 
we, we hit $840 billion market cap. I couldn't believe it. It was insane to me to think about that. And I just thought, man, there's no way we get at 1 trillion. And then we hit two, and then we hit 3.3 trillion in 2021. So as we go through this process, how much higher could we be? It's, it's hard to even fathom and think about. And some people will give you price predictions, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So, I mean, could, is it within reason to say that we couldn't go to 3.3 trillion again? Maybe 5 trillion, maybe 6 trillion? Just saying. I mean, we almost 4X from the original one. So in three years, when that comes out and they've been mining for that time, might be a good, might be a good investment. Crazier things have been said. Uh, ah, good question. How are you on the S mile chess game? So there's a link in the description right under sweat coin. It's called S uh, Satoshi miles and you download it to your phone. It's free and they pay you in Satoshi's for all your steps. Sweat coin pays you in sweat and all that good stuff. But this one, they also have a chess game. I've tried it. I'm awful at chess. Maybe Ben should check it out. Uh, cause I suck at it. So I always get my, I always, I always get whooped on it. Ah, uh, David, I went this long without locking up ETH. Now Binance, Binance got me. I think uh, Binance is offering 6% if you lock up your ETH. <laughs> Fool me once. No. <laughs> Only losers sell the bun. Hey, sometimes you gotta, you gotta get paid. It's okay. There's no shame in that. Thoughts on helium? Uh, my son loves that stuff. Helium. He's got a helium miner. And uh, I don't get it. Like, I mean, I can understand where they're going for. I mean, they're like, well, we're, you know, telecommunications and trying to uh, give mobile service and things like that to people who, you know, want a different option. I get it, but uh, I don't know. I, there's different problems with it, and we'll see how it grows. Here's the thing. And we were talking about this on the, on, the, um, on the Twitter spaces. Just pay attention to the projects that grow because the ones that can make it through this bear market are going to crush it in the bull market. That goes without saying. It's very, and then you say, well, how do I do that? You keep, your, you keep watching these types of videos. You keep doing more research. You, tape, you keep taking a look at the things that are going on behind the scenes as best you can. And just go, which ones are hanging around? And those are the ones that do pretty well. I got to tell you, Cardano, as much as people hate it and uh, you know say this is awful, or whatever else, still still around, still doing pretty good, still making things happen. And even I'll even say this, even Tron, people who give that Tron a, a hard time. I think it's still in the top twenty. Am I wrong? Maybe top twenty-five. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, hmm. And the new ones, who knows? And I just think that and really pay attention to decentralized finance protocols. The Aves, the compounds, because you know who let us down? It wasn't DeFi. It was parts of the ecosystem that got hacked because for whatever reasons, plenty. You know who let us down was the, uh, the centralized players. They really did. And it wasn't the decentralized parts. So trustless. It's cold. High hills? Helium 40%. Sure. That's another thing. <sighs> Whatever your project is, chances are it's down, unless you love helium. It's about forty percent. But just because that the price action doesn't reflect it doesn't mean it's awful. It just means that it's just not. For some reason, people aren't just investing into it right now. And it's the same thing with like Jeff Bezos. I remember he had a he had a point where uh, his stock went down ninety percent. And he's like, why is the stock so much down? He took a look at the metrics. He goes, well, I mean, we just acquired 40 more warehouses. We just did two more business acquisitions worth tens of millions of dollars. We just branched out to parts of Europe. Should be up. It's kind of weird. And he sent, that, sent a letter out to his, uh, his stockholders. He goes, look, I know we're down 90%, but uh, this is the metrics that I see. I think we're primed for growth. And that's what's going on right now behind the scenes. So just pay attention to which ones are building. Yes, I'm not your dad. Not financial advice. No, Matawi, uh, no thoughts on quant, unfortunately. Again, super biased on this channel, as you can probably tell. I don't invest in a helium, so I don't know much about it. Don't know much about quant, because I don't invest into it. The other stuff, well, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> no one gives a damn about boomers needful things. Oh, I know this one. You got to look, look into it. It's a scammer payback YouTube channel. Last call before scammer. Yeah, that's, I love that guy. Uh, there's this YouTube channel, say in the comment section. He actually gets, he talks to these scammers, he identifies them, and then he, uh, he tries to shut them down. It's pretty interesting. You're welcome. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Ripple and XRP and all the people that had to go through that hellaciousness, which is the uh, Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. I think it's uh, frivolous. And uh, if I don't care if you hate XRP and Ripple or love XRP and Ripple, you should be rooting for that lawsuit and a positive outcome. So that'll affect the whole industry. And we keep hearing about it's going to settle soon. It's going to settle soon. I don't know. No one knows. Ooh, look at that. Took earnings from ETH and staked in Polygon. I like Polygon because I bought it. Thank you for the super sticker. Very nice. Facts. <laughs> Great advice. This is just a penny from some guy in his mom's basement with a really nice green screen. When wrench? Wrench is tomorrow. Hmm. Well, number three is like the Coinbase call wall trends. Everybody's got their opinion. I think James think it's James from Vest Angeles thinks this thinks it's the Winklevoss twins. One of them. Who knows? Uh, yeah, you know why Tron doesn't get covered here? Americans. That's why. I will say this though. I was in New York last week, walking down Times Square. The very top billboard, one of the biggest ones. Who was it? Justin Sun's face. And uh, talking about Tron and how great it is. So they still got money to, uh, to advertise. <laughs> this is funny. Remember last week when I asked about Argo? Did you see what happened since then? Look, man, everybody talks about a project and this and that. And I'm sure it's great. I know even Charles Hoskinson, was, he had an AMA and he talks about how he doesn't understand why Ethereum Classic even exists and that Ergo is uh, their choice. So, great. I'll look into it at some point. I don't know. In your opinion, how much percentage-wise will we get back from our assets in Voyager? I don't know, but it's a, it's a high, I think it's a higher percentage than uh, Celsius, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, so checks is a good question. Given the downfall of Voyager and Celsius, should we have any concern in the future with iTrust? I know it is a bit different. Everything has risks. Everything that is out there, you should have concerns about. Definitely. And uh, for me, like this was the thing that, that got me. Like I had a low percentage on Celsius. I had a low percentage on Voyager of my entire portfolio. So it still stings but it's not like I sold my kidney and kids and put my entire life savings on there like some people did. That was a problem, right? And we talk about that. We talk about that at length, about all these different things. And that's why I have the rules up there below me. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Just think it's all gone. Everything's a scam. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. Those types of things. So as far as like with iTrust, I've talked to those guys at length about how it, how it goes. First of all, they're not doing... They're not doing lending, they're not doing DeFi plays, they're not doing, they just, how they make their money is very simple. It's a 1% transaction fee for everything that you move around in there. And because it's a Roth IRA, like I can't put my entire life savings. For me, I'm capped here in America at $7,000 per year and that is it. So it's not like I can say 10 billion in there. I can't do that. So if I lose it, it won't crush me. And that's really what it comes down to is like for di diversification. So for me, I don't, for I, for I trust, it's not like they're caught up in 3AC. It's not like they have to give you yield like Voyager and Celsius did, and that was their whole game. They're just like, look, we used to charge you 29 bucks a month. We, we dropped that. We're just going to charge you 1% for every transaction that you do within your Roth IRA account. And then also, if you want to stake, because you can stake uh, Polkadot right now, if you want to stake it, we're going to take 20% of the rewards. So if you get 
10 polka dot, they're going to take two and they're going to give you eight. But there is no uh, capital gains tax within a Roth IRA. So for me, I look at it, I go, there's still risk. Everything's got risk. But the question is, how much is my risk to reward and how much do I allocate to that part? Well, for me, it's not that much. So uh, it really comes down to what you want to do. All right. Uh, well, not Nadal. He just got bounced. Uh, Kyrgios, did he, I know he played last night. I don't know if he made it. He was getting crushed when I saw him, but we'll see. And then uh, what's her name? Go with Goff or something like that. She's really good. And then the guy that beat Nadal. What? Algorand just announced 6,000 transactions per second. Chris, that is interesting. I will take a look at that. Maudi, Binance, the list, USDC. Nah, kind of. You have to watch yesterday's video when we talked about that. It's uh, even uh, uh, Alaire, the uh, CEO of, of Circle for USDC, said this is a great move. Good for them. And uh, he applauded it. So the reason is, just watch the video yesterday. It's not like they delisted it. You, you can, you can uh, withdraw anything in any of your stable coins, uh, USDC, Paxos, or whatever it is, and stuff. I only use USDC right now and, uh, and BN, or BUSD. That's it. I don't like Tether. Something about it. I know it's never been depegged. It's true. But I just, I don't know. That's just me. Got it. I gotta get out of here. So we're gonna do, uh, oh, I got another video today, matter of fact, everybody. I gotta get out of here. So we're doing, uh, I have this project. I love these guys. It's, uh, it's the These Nuts NFT project. And I know it's, not everything in crypto has to be so serious. And this bear market, I think it's time we just take a little bit of a breather. And these guys, this group helped me out when I was in a, in a pretty bad time uh, not too long ago. So I love them for it. And uh, they don't pay me anything. I've, down, I've, I've got their, uh, the NFT. And it's just, if you ever want to laugh and have a good time, you have to go <laughs> to, their, to their groups. And they're just great. So I'm going to do, we did a, a pre-recorded session with these guys. And they're doing really good things for cancer and charity and utility and inclusion, female uh, artists and, and those type of things. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to do a Q and a with, uh, with Papa and, uh, cookie. If you don't know those guys, you get about to know. Them. Oh, that was all right. So anyhow, that's it. I got to get going. So that premiere will launch in a little bit and then we'll do a Q and a over there. Busy. Like I said, busy days going on. Anyhow, if you like today's video, thumbs up, uh, subscribe and, uh, if YouTube even lets you know I'm doing a video. But that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. I do appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Oh, got to end the broadcast.